Hello everyone and welcome to round 9 of the 2018 Candidates Tournament. Here we have another Russian brawl. Uh, after that game, uh, Grishchuk versus Kramnik in the previous round, here we have Karyakin versus Kramnik. Uh, and interestingly, they they go for, for the same opening, but uh, Karyakin uh, decides to take a different approach on move 4. And then uh, later really surprises Kramnik with a certain move. So before we before we start with this game, uh, here are a couple of photos from this round. Here is Kramnik making himself comfortable here. Uh, here we have uh, also a photo of Kramnik dwelling on the position. And here we have Karakin uh, at the moment as he pushes h4. I, I show this photo now as a dh4 idea comes uh, rather soon in the game. Uh, so let's see it. Uh, we have c4, the English opening, e6, the Agincourt defense, so the, the same approach he uh, had against Grishchuk in the previous round, knight to c3, d5, and d4. Again, transposing into the queen's gambit declined, and here we have knight to f6. Uh, in the, his game against Grishchuk, Grishchuk continued knight f3, and then we had the immediate c5. <clears throat> Here we have c captures on d5, uh, the exchange variation of the queen's gambit declined. Uh, knight captures on d5, e4 now. Uh, knight captures on c3, b captures on c3, and now c5. Uh, rook to b1, uh, bishop to e7, knight to f3, and castles by Kramnik. Uh, and here, this is the moment h4 was played. Here, we can uh, check it out one more time. So, that's the h4 move, and uh, here, Kramnik played c captures on d4. Uh, c captures on d4, and knight to c6. Uh, and here, Karakin pushed h5. And here uh, you have to decide what to do. It's it's definitely uh, uh, not not an everyday position. And here it took Kramnik uh, 22 and a half minutes to decide on his next move. And obviously, you can play the, choose to play peacefully with h6. Uh, you you could maybe play b6 and uh, later defend against this with bishop to f6. Uh, but Kramnik decided to go for the very active f5 after 22 and a half minutes. So, uh, Karakin grabbed that pawn, e captures on f5, uh, queen to a5 check, this was the whole idea, bishop to d2, blocking check, and now queen captures on f5. And bishop to c3. Bishop to c3 is definitely the strongest move by Karakin here. Uh, it's hard to say if uh, Kramnik anticipated this. Uh, the idea is that if you go for something like rook to b5, which seems to be a lot more active, uh, after queen g4, black is perfectly fine here, uh, still this pawn is un under a... Uh, is attacked twice, uh, still white has to deal with this. Uh, so after this, queen captures on f5, bishop to c3, uh, now h6 by Kramnik, and uh, bishop to d3 now. Also the idea of bishop to c3, making room for, for the queen to defend the bishop on d3. Uh, queen to g4, and here uh, the g2 pawn is attacked, so uh, Karakin goes for king to f1. Uh, castling here was also possible, but then you have to give up the h5 pawn, and it's a different... Uh, it's a totally different game then, but white is still okay, even if he castles. But uh, Karakin goes for king to f1, and uh, here again we have a lot of ideas here for Kramnik. Uh, he can go bishop to f6, he can continue to develop with b6, bishop b7, uh, maybe a, a lot of ideas here, but he, he, he plays e5, and e5 is, is a really forcing move. So something something will definitely happen here, and uh, capturing doesn't really uh, give white anything, so Karakin pushes d5, which was probably expected by Kramnik. Uh, Kramnik pushes e4 here, and again, there's only one good move here, which Karakin plays it, d captures on c6, uh, we have e captures on, on f3, and now g captures on f3. And this is the, well, <clears throat> there were a lot of... Uh, uh, more or less critical moments in the game, but th this is the most critical moment in the game, uh, where the only good move for uh, Kramnik in this position is queen captures on f3. And after queen captures, uh, rook captures now king to e2, attacking the rook. Uh, black would have to give up the exchange here, as he doesn't want to allow c captures on b7, so after rook captures, uh, king captures and b captures on c6, black would be up a pawn. Uh, but and maybe with the, the bishop pair, may, maybe he could hold this position uh, as he's up up upon. But uh, it's a very hard to say would he be able to. Uh, but uh, Kramnik didn't want to go into this after g captures on f3. Uh, Kramnik played the very brave rook captures on f3, and rook captures on f3 is uh, actually losing on the spot. Uh, but uh, 
Karakin didn't immediately punish this move. Uh, you immediately punish this move by playing uh, pawn captures on b7. Uh, but it's a really complicated move to make. Uh, in in the in the game, bishop to e2 was played by Karakin, as this immediately now wins the rook. You you can't move the rook, otherwise you lose the queen. Uh, so it's also a very nice move. But uh, if uh, and he made it like instantly. Uh, if he played c captures on b7, this wins the game immediately. But it's a very hard move to make. Uh, now we have to calculate bishop captures on b7, rook captures on b7, and now. Basically, you have two main lines for black. For, you have to calculate what happens if rook captures on f2. Uh, then you have to see that king captures, bishop to c5, check. Uh, king moves, now comes rook to e8, check. And after bishop to e2, uh, you, you, have to, you have to calculate that everything is uh, fine here for white. Uh, but uh, that's not the only thing. After this, rook captures on b7, there's also rook to d8. And now, uh, there's a double attack on the bishop on d3, so after rook captures bishop on e7, rook captures on d3, uh, queen to b3, check. Uh, now, king to f8, attacking the rook on e7. Uh, now you have to find uh, the only move that wins for white in this position, and that's rook to e6. And rook to e6 is a, is a very nice move. Uh, it completely wins the game for white, uh, because the, now there's no de no defense against queen to b8 check, followed by queen to e8, and this will be checkmate when the king occupies the f7 square. And uh, the only way for black uh, to do anything about this, as there's no defense against this, is uh, he could try capturing an f2, and after if you capture, then it's a draw, you can't allow queen f3 check. So king to e1, and now... Again, you have to see that rook to d1 check. Uh, of course, now, again, if you capture on f2, it's a draw. Uh, but after queen captures, now either can capture the queen on d1 or you can capture on e6. But whatever you do, uh, now, uh, you can see that white is winning. But there are so many variations that white has to uh, calculate. And Sergei, for some reason, didn't even want to spend any time considering this. So after rook captures on, e, uh, on f3, he simply played bishop to e2. Now, of course, you will lose that rook. Uh, and uh, Kromnik decided to immediately sacrifice it with rook captures on f2. So king captures on f2 and now bishop to c5 with check. Uh, king to f1 and uh, here queen to f4 check. Uh, you don't really have time for any queen to g3 ideas followed by queen g2 check, uh, queen f2 checkmate as bishop, uh, queen to d5 check uh, wins the game on the spot. After you move the king, queen to d8 is coming, bishop to d3, uh, it's all over. So after this king to f1 move, queen to f4 check. Uh, bishop to f3, and here, uh, it, again, uh, Kromnik took some time to consider his next move, uh, and he played b captures on c6. Uh, he missed uh, bishop to e6, which is a slightly better move, uh, but it, it doesn't matter because uh, the, the same move, uh, the, the same defensive move Karakin has to find uh, for one idea works also for the other idea, so I'm sure Karakin would have found it uh, nevertheless. Uh, here b captures on c6 was played and now bishop to a6 is a threat. And here uh, the only uh, defensive move that still gives a white an edge uh, is actually bishop to e1. And uh, Karakin found this move. Uh, if you try any anything other than this, for example, if you go king to g2 to immediately improve, uh, defend the bishop and then maybe threaten bishop to e1 to g3, uh, then you lose the game on the spot. Now queen to g5 check, king moves, uh, bishop to a6 check, king moves and rook to e8 uh, and it's all over. You don't uh, have any squares for your king as the bishops uh, and the queen are covering all of the squares here. So you'd have to put, put a piece in there and then simply rook captures and it's game over. So not, not, a, not a completely, uh, you know, uh, safe position, but uh, you do have to be very careful. So after this, uh, this b captures on c6, uh, Karakin did play the only move for white here, uh, bishop to e1. Uh, now, bishop to e6 was played, uh, we have bishop to h4, and this bishop to h4 is again uh, one of the ideas why this uh, bishop to e1 move. Now the bishop from h4 <coughs> uh, will be very useful uh, after this king comes to g2, it can come back to g3. Uh, but also it's uh, guarding the d8 square, it's not allowing Kromnik to play rook to d8 followed by rook to d2. Uh, so here Kromnik played rook to f8, uh, we have king to g2, uh, king to h8 now, uh, rook to c1 attacking the bishop, uh, rook to f5 defending, uh, we have rook to c3, and it's a very uh, critical, I mean it's not a critical position, but uh, it's a position where you feel that uh, white is under attack and black definitely should have something. Uh, but uh, 
as you can see, he doesn't, and uh, Sergei really plays a nice move, rook to c3, improving the position. Uh, he still has his other rook to bring into the game, but, uh, you know, that will happen, and then he will simply be a whole rook up. Uh, so, rook to d5, attacking the queen. Now you can see that uh, the rook on c3 is also uh, possible. Uh, it can also be used to play rook to d3, uh, but uh, Karakin calculates correctly and uh, he doesn't mind. Uh, bishop captures, bishop captures. Uh, this is now with check. Uh, but now this rook also can interpose here. This was a very important uh, idea of rook to c3. Rook to f3 now. Uh, queen to g4 check, bishop to g3, now you can see that the bishop is also very useful on that diagonal. Uh, bishop to d6 and now rook to h3, and uh, although the white king is under siege, there's really no way for black to increase the pressure here. Uh, bishop to e7, uh, here queen to e2, and now bishop blocks, uh, bishop to e4, uh, queen to f2, now a5, uh, a4, uh, c5, uh, Kramnik tries to push his passed pawn, uh, rook to h1, bishop to f6, uh, rook to e1, uh, bishop moves to c6, now rook to e3, uh, c4, uh, queen to e2, uh, we have queen to h5, capturing the pawn on h5, uh, queen captures on c4, and after bishop to d7 here, rook to d3 was played, and uh, he, in this position Vladimir Kramnik resigned the game. <clears throat> Basically, he was only waiting for uh, Karakin to reach move 41 and to reach time control, and uh, now uh, there's really no point in continuing this, as uh, Kramnik is down a whole rook and also down the exchange, so this is too much material to have no compensation for. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it was a very dangerous game. Uh, Kramnik decided not to go for that uh, worse ending where he will be down the exchange. So, rather, he went for this attack uh, featuring this rook sacrifice on f2. And, uh, you know, it could, it, could have, uh, it could have happened if it maybe wasn't, wasn't Karakin defending on this side. For example, if, if bishop to e1 wasn't found here, if any other move was played, uh, then maybe Kramnik's attack would, would have... Uh, been successful but yeah it's very hard to play like this in in such a tournament uh, so unfortunately for Kramnik another loss for him and uh, another win for Sergei Karakin who is now uh, I don't have the standings as there are still games being played I think only the Caruana Dingliran game is still being played but uh, uh, yeah I, I uh, maybe I'll show that game as well so and uh, then I will show you the standings but I think uh, Karakin is up to uh, maybe even in the top three now after winning this game. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, not not the greatest uh, tournament for Vladimir Kramnik, and it's interesting. He started with two and a half out of three, and now he's at three and a half out of nine. So a brilliant start, and then nothing for for a very long time. But he, you know, uh, who knows? He might play a couple of brilliant games all, all the way to till the end of the tournament. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Doug Douglas Rife, uh, Alex Ayob, uh, Daniel May, uh, Yiri Kruzil, and Eugene Yarovoy uh, for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, probably tomorrow morning with Game 10 of the Talbot Unique series. Thank you all.